Hello and welcome back to the Engineer's Blueprints. Today we're going to be going over one of the maps introduced in the Jungle Inferno update, Moss Rock. This is a 2.1 stage, attack defend style control point map, and one of my personal favorite attack defend maps to be added to the game recently. This is also the very first community made map that I've covered in this series. Moss Rock was primarily created by Freya, who is also the author of the popular King of the Hill map, Suijin, which I think is evidenced by how pretty Moss Rock is. Lots of flowing water, atmospheric foliage, a calming sunset lighting that washes over the whole area. But what's even cooler about Moss Rock, to me at least, is that that it's not only a good looking map, it plays pretty well in pubs, especially as Engineer, like pretty much any other attack defend map. Now as we finish up on the callouts on screen, I will mention that because Moss Rock is a relatively new map, and it's not being played in any competitive setting as of this video, the names of the areas and callouts are pretty much all made up by me, so these aren't exactly a great reference, but I will be using these terms throughout the course of this map review in particular. Alright, let's just get right down to it, starting out on defense. The teleporter entrance always goes best right in front of the middle shutter door inside of the prep area outside of spawn and the fastest way to the front is out of the left door down the ramp near the point and then through the flank into the main house in fact the main house is going to be the best place for the majority of your team to be holding on defense so that's also the best place to set up your teleporter exit pretty much anywhere else in this house should be fine but I like to put it up in the corner of this balcony because it's pretty out of the way and when your teammates come through it they'll get a pretty good view of the point and have high ground on any undesired who might be causing trouble in here. If your team is holding passively in the radio shack building across from the point, which can usually happen if they eventually get pushed out of the main house, there are a few pretty hidden spots for a teleporter exit that you might also be able to use as a flank teleporter later on, such as on top of this crate near the drop down, which is basically invisible to anyone who doesn't actually walk over here. Just be careful that when you come out of it, not to accidentally fall down this hole. Another great spot that is basically sapper proof from anywhere but the entrance is on the corner of the secret ladder at the very back of the radio shack. You can get up there pretty easily by doing a building hop onto the metal sheet and carefully placing it. This spot can also give your team access to the roof above the connector, which can be a pretty deadly sniper spot since it's difficult for spies to access it. Just be sure that when you're placing the exit, you're facing it in the right direction so your teammates don't plummet to their death immediately after taking it. And the last good teleporter spot, which also happens to be semi sapper proof, is to just place it on top of the roof above the point, which can give your team some decent high ground and provide a very nice sniper sightline for your friendly snipers. Just don't place it on the sunny side of the roof so it doesn't get spammed out from main, and make sure that when you jump off the roof, you aim for the ground and not the death pit below you. Now, your dispenser should generally be placed wherever your team is going to be holding, so if they're holding really far forward in the front houses with the connector, you should be putting it in there, and if they're holding in the main house, you should be putting it in there, and so on and so forth. The basic guideline for dispenser placement is much more liberal than the placements for teleporters or sentry guns, so don't be afraid to move that gear up or back based on what your team is doing. But the most common spot for a dispenser on this part of the map is around the corner from this little doorway near the health packs and ammo packs, but you can spread the heels around a little better by putting it on the other side. For the sentry gun, I think you're just going to have to accept that there is no perfect spot on Moss Rock. Pretty much every area where a sentry would be placed has a fairly obvious sightline or weakness, which is a good thing, but it does mean that as the engineer player, you'll need to be aware of the risks and rewards of each area and act accordingly. The best place for a sentry gun in the main house is up on the balcony in the very middle because it nicely covers covers all three of the entrances to this area, as well as the bit of ground in front of the point. For this spot on the balcony, you need to be aware of this sightline through main. Soldiers and snipers can easily poke at it, so be ready to wrangle at them or ask your teammates to shut them down if they start to peek through here. But the good thing about keeping this entry on this balcony is that it has the high ground on anyone who steps through any of the three doorways. You can keep the sentry at the very front of the balcony's edge to avoid splash damage that hits the wall behind it, and it's very easy to keep the sentry gun healed from down on the ground with the rescue ranger, which will keep you out of the line of fire from snipers who will try and quickscope you. If you see anyone walking up the stairs towards your gun, they're probably going to be a pretty good candidate for a swift spy check since there isn't much else of a reason for your teammates to be walking up there, so just keep an eye on that. The other well, not good sentry spot, but a more common pub sentry spot is on these battlements, which I can confidently dub the pub spot due to how many newer NG seem to gravitate toward building here. But in my opinion, the only way this spot could truly be considered is if you were to put it really far back in the nook out of the way of long range spam from main, which limits its area denial to just the point, which can be useful if your team has been pushed out of the main house and into the radio shack, since the only good way for the enemy to spam the gun is to expose themselves to fire from your team and the sentry 
infantry gun itself. But remember that it's all too easy for a demo man to lob grenades into your little hidey hole from pretty much anywhere in river or main, and even a well-timed bomb from a soldier over the top of your head could spell death for the sentry gun and yourself pretty quickly. You might be more inclined to place the sentry gun in the radio shack doorway, looking out onto the point, but this exposes your gun to a pretty bad sightline from the main house, and if the enemy team has control of that area, your gun won't last very long. To be honest, the most useful sentry for when your team is holding passively in the radio shack is usually going to be in this exact spot in the back room, because it sees just enough of the close end of the cat point to punish people who get a little too brave, and also covers both of the entrances to the back room from secret, which is a very common way for flanking classes to get the jump on your team. It even keeps an eye on the drop down area just in case someone tries to get at your teleporter. And the last sentry spot I'll mention on this point is to just build it up on the roof above the cap. This spot will only really cover the bridge area behind the main house, and in fact doesn't cover the cap point at all, but it gives you the opportunity to be a little cheeky with the wrangler. I like to build the gun and the teleporter on the darker side of the roof and occasionally peek over to see when it's clear, then I'll move the gun to the top of the roof and use the wrangler to pester people who are standing down in main. Unless they have a pretty good sniper or a ton of soldiers with the direct hit, you can be a pretty big nuisance doing this and provide a big enough distraction for the offensive team to burn the clock dealing with you. Just remember that if you're starting to get spammed out too much, just move the gun a few feet back out of sight and heal up before peeking out again. I usually prefer to use the Eureka effect while doing this so that I can easily get full health and metal supply whenever I want without relying on keeping a dispenser for myself. It also gives me a fallback option just in case I fall off the roof and need to get back up. You can also build on top of the roof above the connector, but this spot gives you a lot less options for pestering the other team, and while it does cover the control point quite nicely, it's easily spammed out from a wide variety of places on the map. Overall, the ability to build on the roof is generally frowned upon by map makers because it can be difficult to balance around for pubs, where nobody tends to look up, but Moss Rock is a great example of roof building done right. Building on Moss Rock's roofs isn't any more powerful than building anywhere else on the map, but it also gives the engineer players a fun and interesting way to play that doesn't feel useless and gimmicky. Speaking of gimmicky roof building, there is a small awning outside of Blue Spawn that you can actually build on, and if you actually get a gun up there before the timer is up, it can be pretty annoying to anyone walking out of the middle door since the sentry gun can see through the tree, but players cannot. But other than that, it's pretty easy to take out from any other angle. And for the record, many sentries can be pretty useful in any of the other regular sentry spots that I've already mentioned, but here are a few sneaky spots that are good for hiding many sentries in. Alright, so moving on to defending last. The only things that change about the entire map when the first point is capped is that the blue spawn is moved forward into the main house, and the radio shack starts to output a frequency of 750 hertz, which contacts the train god, making the train run down the tracks at random intervals. Defending the last point is actually pretty straightforward because as last points go, Moss Rock is pretty easy to defend if you don't die to the train, but you will die to the train, so it basically evens out. Building and maintaining a teleporter begins to become more and more useless the further back you're pushed to the point, so generally you should be more focused on building dispensers and sentry guns. You could try and set up a teleporter exit in the upper house to filter your friendly players through where the other team would typically be, making it harder for them to get organized. Your dispenser placement should, like always, be flexible enough to cater to where your team is holding, but you honestly can't go wrong with just straight up putting it on the corner of the control point. This encourages your team to hold the point and places them on a high ground position over the majority of the area with the tree. If your team is holding down Toxic and fighting in the hallway, you should move it to sit right around the corner on the balcony. If your flank classes need some help holding down the left side flank area, you can put the dispenser up against this wall in between the shutter and the corner to spiral. Just don't, under any circumstance, place the dispenser too close to the tracks because it'll inevitably cause its customers to get sideswiped by the train. The most obvious place to build your sentry gun to defend the point is on the right side of Red Spawn on the very corner of the balcony. This puts your gun in full view of the point without exposing itself to very many sight lines. The main issue is that keeping it behind the tracks will make the gun occasionally effectively useless when the train is passing by, so just be aware of that. If you want to be less reliant on the train god, another spot is up on the corner of the balcony. It basically covers the good part of the area below, especially the shutter door. It can also see underneath the point and will punish any flankers who aren't careful who try and sneak by. The biggest thing to be wary of when building on the balcony is how easy it will be for an uber 
100 power class to tear through if they come through toxic. So make sure you're ready to defend or get the hell out of there in a pinch. You could also cover the point effectively by building on the small roof on the left side of the prep area, but it's pretty easy to spam out from toxic, the shutter door, and it's very exposed to a nasty cypher sightline from all the way back on the bridge through flank. So I don't recommend building here unless you have no other choice. And as always, the placement of regular sentry guns can also apply to minis, but if you want to catch some people off guard over by the tree, you can put it in this little bush in the corner, perfect for keeping the shutter door held down and pestering people who get too far past the tree. And that's pretty much it for defensive building placement now to go over the general strategy of playing Moss Rock defensively, which is pretty simple. Very similar to playing payload maps, playing attack defend is all about wasting time and making the other team work for every inch of ground. That means treating to every holding area leading up to the control points like a miniature control point itself. In order to do this effectively, you should always be prepared to abandon your buildings when you expect to die shortly after your buildings go down. If you've watched any of my other videos on playing engineer effectively, you'll know that preserving your life in order to get a head start on building in the next area is much more important than keeping your nest alive for a few extra seconds. This mindset is extremely important when playing on defense, so don't get too caught up in going down with your ship. One thing to mention about the first point in particular is that it takes a very, very long time to cap, which means that if your team loses the main house pretty convincingly, don't consider the first point lost by any means. If your team can make it back in time to chase them off, you can retake that ground long before the offensive team is even close to completing the capture. The best way to approach the point when blue team is standing near it is from Radio Shack. Approaching from the bridge or trying to retake the main house from that angle puts you on the low ground and at a pretty clear disadvantage. So, you know, don't try it. Once the first point is capped though, you'll find yourself naturally pushed back to last due to the abundance of enclosed houses and corridors leading up to the point that can be risky to try and hold, but don't worry, as long as you keep track of the train and make sure you position yourself in a way where a blue team push doesn't happen when the train is blocking you off from accessing the control point, it should be fairly easy to keep people away from the objective. Alright, so we've covered Moss Rock for playing defensive engineer, so now we'll flip over to the blue team and talk about playing on offense. Starting with the most important building when playing blue engineer, the teleporter entrance can go pretty much anywhere outside of spawn for now, but since you won't have to walk too far before you'll start to encounter enemies, the exit likely won't come into play until after you and your team have taken control of either the main house or radio shack. If you have control of the main house, the teleporter exit can go in the same area as where the red teleporter went, up on the balcony overlooking the rest of the floor, except over on the opposite side. The reason for putting it over here instead is because when pushing the point from the main house, the red team will likely be holding over in the radio shack, meaning that standing in the doorway can expose you to a possible sniper sightline. Coming out of the teleporter on this side and dropping down could potentially place an unaware teammate into the crosshairs of an enemy sniper, so it's best to be safe and place them in a position where they can cautiously peek around the corner instead. If the enemy team is holding down the main house pretty hard, you might consider taking a flank route through river and into secret and see if you can get a teleporter somewhere around Radio Shack in order to filter your teammates onto the point that way. But overall, it just comes down to being aware of where the enemy team is holding and making a play when you see an opening. But most of the time you'll likely be fighting with your team, so equip that shotgun and the gunslinger and just start chipping away. Dispensers can be really useful for maintaining an area that your team is taking control of, and don't be afraid to destroy the old one to save time putting it down somewhere else. It's better to be upfront with your team building new stuff than to waste time running back towards spawn for a level 1 dispenser. Because the first point takes such a long time to cap, making sure your sentry gun is as much of an issue for red team as they attempt to keep your teammates off of it is very very important. You might even consider running regular sentries with the Jag instead of mini sentries so they have a lot more health to deal with. Something that I personally like to do when I find that the main pathway is clear is to quickly build up a level 3 at spawn and use the Wrangler and Rescue Ranger to get on top of the roof above the point. This can cause a big distraction for the defending team that will prevent them from focusing on keeping your teammates from capturing. The gun can easily catch people off guard when they retreat for the health pack in the ditch or try and hide in secret, and you can use your Wrangler to pester people who are standing in the flank with no way to approach the main house. And just like on defense, I highly recommend equipping the Eureka effect so that you can easily reset your health and ammo after taking control of the roof. Once the first point is captured, remember that the blue spawn room is moved up into the main house, so you'll need to update your teleporter entrance accordingly. The best way to approach last is by taking control of the upper house and hallway and pushing out through toxic, so the ideal teleporter spot to maintain this hold is in the corner near the big ammo pack. If you somehow can't put it in there, then you could settle for putting it somewhere 
in the house with the drop down, but generally it's just best to keep it out of sight. If you want to be a sneaky cheeky kind of guy, you could try and somehow get underneath the point and put a hidden teleporter exit down there to surprise the enemy with an insurgence from beneath, but that's usually only a good idea if your team already has a reliable teleporter that's taking them where they actually need to go. Your dispenser should always remain flexible of course, but usually your team will be having a giant spam war in the hallway, so it's always a good idea to keep it in the left corner out of the way of splash damage so your team can keep fighting. If your flank needs some help holding their area down on the right side, you can put a handy dispenser at the bottom of Spiral near this popsicle poster, or even put it a little bit further back in between the entrance to Spiral and the shutter door. Sentry guns while pushing last will generally just act as an assurance for keeping control of your staging area while you're getting ready for coordinated pushes onto the control point, and unless you're constantly getting aggressive or playing on the flank a lot, running regular sentry guns while your team builds Uber is generally going to be the most effective. One good idea is to put the sentry in the frame of this doorway. That way it keeps an eye on the top of Spiral, the drop down, and the front end of the hallway if anyone gets too brave. Then when you see your team Ubering in through Toxic, you can grab the gun, bring it through drop down, and out of the shutter door, and then place it underneath the balcony to get a good view of the point when the red team starts to retaliate. Hopefully everyone will be so preoccupied with dealing with the main push that no one will see you, and your sentry gun can clean up with ease. In fact, let's just jump right into the rest of the basic strategy for playing offense on Moss Rock. The main thing to keep in mind being that acting as a team when trying to take areas or attempting to capture the control points is the most surefire way to win on not only this map, but pretty much every attack defend map in the game. So don't try and take things alone unless you're in a position to do so. Engineer by his current design is not an offensive leaning class, so you're going to be the strongest when working alongside others and playing more of a supportive role than a purely attacking role. This means that maintaining your buildings when you can observe your team is holding an area and swiftly making the decision to move your buildings forward when you can see that your team is making a push is pretty much the extent of the offensive engineer mindset. Keep in mind that because your respawn timer is significantly shorter on blue, as long as your teleporter is up and in a forward position, you can afford to make riskier plays than you might be able to get away with on defense. So don't just sit around healing your dispenser all day. Pay close attention to when the enemy team has less people alive than your team or when your team is beginning to get aggressive and go do something dumb. Move the sentry gun up while no one is looking, sneak behind and shotgun a medic to death. Sure, you might die, but trading an engineer's life for anyone else's life while all of your buildings are currently alive is significantly tilted in your favor. So this has been the complete engineer's blueprint for the attack defend map Moss Rock. If you have any questions or suggestions on how to play this map as engineer, feel free to leave a comment. And remember, if anything about this map looks a little different from what you're used to, chances are that this map has been updated since the release of this video, and you should check the description for an update video going over the changes should they affect any of the strategies discussed in this video. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. And if there's a specific map that you guys would like to see on this series, let me know in the comments below. And I might cover it in a future episode of the Engineer's Blueprints. I will talk to you nieces and nephews next time. Bye-bye.